This video is about data collection. In order to draw MCT maps, as you learned in one of the previous videos, you need to collect data. In this video, we will show you what kind of data you should collect. Besides, we discuss two important rules you should never forget when starting the data collection. Finally, we show you some alternatives to collect the data. So first, what is appropriate data? As you already know, MCT maps are not made for the whole enterprise, but for a specific product line or product family. Therefore, the data that you are going to collect should relate to this product line or product family. This includes product details and process details. Product details are elements which are related to the specific product or product family, like at routings over the shop floor, work in progress and inventory. Normally, inventory holding points are used to help reduce the lead time to the customer. However, as you know, MCT is a metric that quantifies the total system-wide waste and displays all opportunities for improvement. On the other hand, process details are elements which are related to the overall process, such as the touch and elapse time, which are recognized as the grey and white space. Since queuing, waiting and move delays are included in the white space, you should also gather details about these elements. Besides, data about the overall working hours in days per week or hours per day should be gathered. You need this for your MCT calculations, which is addressed in detail in the video about MCT calculation. Now we will continue with introducing the two important rules that you should keep in mind when collecting data appropriately. First of all, and probably the most important one, you should keep the data collection step simple. Most of the time, Detailed statistical data analysis are not necessary at all. What matters are the ratios of the grey and white spaces to show where and why improvement is possible. For example, when you know that the amount of white space is approximately 85%, is it important to know whether this is exactly 83% or 87%? No, it isn't. After all, with 85% you already know where to start. However, when initial insights do indicate the need for more detailed analysis in any particular area, you could always drill down deeper in those specific areas and collect more data. But in the beginning, it's all about the general overview. So keep it simple to ensure no time is wasted or data is collected which is not needed. The second important rule of MCT that you should keep in mind is that all activities are carried out from scratch. This implies that for all used components, the time to fabricate these components or to get them from a supplier, must be included in the MCT. But as you might expect, this could complicate the data gathering process if you have large, complex bill of materials, for example. And we just said, keep data collection as simple as possible and try to look at the big picture. Therefore, to become more effective, two strategies are suggested. First of all, limit the scope. You could, for example, decide to look within the four walls of your factory first and extend the analysis to the supply chain in a future effort. The second strategy is that non-critical items should not be included in the MCT. But what is a non-critical item? An item is non-critical if it satisfies 
three conditions. First, the costs should be very low relative to the end item. Second, there are a lot of suppliers of the item in the market. And finally, the specifications of the item are unlikely to be changed or will not require functional testing if they do change. For example, nuts and bolts are non-critical items. Their costs are very low relative to the end item. There are a lot of suppliers of nuts and bolts in the market and specifications are not likely to change. Other examples could be plastic pellets, sheet metal and so on. In the final part of this video we will show you some alternatives for collecting the data. There are several ways to do this. In some cases it is useful to monitor a single product. Keep in mind that the data is representative for a product group. Thus no rush hot jobs, but a product that can be considered as normal or average. Besides, a product should be chosen which illustrates the problems identified and not a product that does not experience any problems at all. Then, whenever possible, use as much facts as possible and try not to use estimates. You could, for example, visit the work floor to measure actual times. But, remember, keep it simple. So only if this contributes to the overall MCT map and related ratios of the grey and white space. You could also use tagging sheets for collecting further and more accurate data. Tagging sheets can be attached to orders to record the times for each step in the process. Finally, in an office environment, it might be possible to collect historical data using the email box or via electronic tagging systems in an ERP system and so on. So to recap, in this video you learned to gather data about product details and process details. We also showed you the two important rules of MCT. Keep it simple and all activities are carried out from scratch. Finally, we showed you some alternatives for collecting data, such as the use of tagging sheets or monitoring one single product. This brings us to the end of this video about data collection.